Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you can hopefully tell by the title and how I look right now, um, this video is my Halloween tutorial. I have been really inspired this Halloween to give this look a go, I've never done it before. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna get straight into the video and I hope you guys enjoy it. So for this video, you are going to need the following. Some liquid latex, this is really cheap. If you don't have it, you can use like duo eyelash glue. That's also really good. You're gonna need some red body paint or dark red makeup, anything like that that you own, but it needs to be dark red. You're gonna need some fake blood. This is a cheap uh, example of fake blood, but um, I'm gonna use more expensive blood, which is this Meron one, because I find this a lot better, it's a lot more real, and it doesn't stain my skin, but the cheaper one does. As you can see, it's gloopy and gross and grim and disgusting and everything that you want it to be on Halloween, so I'm gonna use that. You're also gonna need a spatula. This has two ends to it. You're also gonna need some like random brushes that you don't want ruining, some makeup in case you wanna create some bruises, some loo roll, I look really happy, uh, and some cotton buds for the blood. So to start off with, you're gonna wanna take your liquid latex and your spatula, and you're gonna wanna use the flat side of the spatula, and you don't want too much latex to start off with. Basically, the latex just acts like glue, um, in case you didn't know that. So you just wanna apply the latex in the place and in the shape that you want your wound to actually be but you don't want too much latex and um, I got a bit in my eye there um, but yeah so don't put it in your eye but uh, yeah you don't want too much latex um, but you want a good a good amount then make sure as you go along you're wiping your spatula because the latex likes to dry quite quickly um, so it might ruin your spatula. So then what I am doing now is I'm just blending out um, the latex into my skin on like the very edges so it doesn't create any harsh lines and it is flush against my skin because that's very important to do as you go along. As I said it dries quite quickly. Then you're going to take your tissue and you're going to want to um, rip it in half um, and then you're just going to want, you can rip it in half again if you really want to um, but as long as you just rip similar sizes to the size of latex that you've applied onto your face then um, that's exactly what you want so I'm just pressing the tissue onto my face um, which looks funny <laughs> but hopefully it's going to stick and then all you want to do is then just rip off the excess tissue that's around it don't worry if you rip any tissue that's stuck on to your face it shouldn't rip if it's stuck on but um, don't worry if it does rip because that will just add to the effect and it'll look even better and um, so you should have something like that then you just want to keep unlayering this up a bit like paper mache so I've applied another bit of latex on top of that tissue and stuck tissue on top again I'm ripping away any of the excess tissue and I'm just going to keep on doing this until I'm happy with the thickness of my wound um, so yeah just keep working at it and then finally when you're happy with however much tissue you have on you want to take a very 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 small dollop of latex and blend this into the top layer of your tissue and to your skin so the top layer of tissue is sticking to your skin and it looks flush with your skin there's no harsh lines there's no bumps there's no lumps there's no creases um, this is a very crucial part so make sure when you're doing this you really take your time with it because if you miss out this part it would just look like you've stuck something on top of your face rather than it's flush with your skin um, so this is the most important part so just take your time with it and don't rush this part because this part is very important if you haven't gathered by now I've said it many many times <laughs> next step is for it to dry but you don't want it to dry too much you just want it to dry a little bit because then we're going to go back in with our spatula and this spatula has like a sharper side to it but please be very very careful when doing this um, you just want to pierce if you can a tiny little hole in it and then cut all the way up bearing in mind your skin is underneath which is why I said be careful um, but you just want to basically open the tissue and this is what's going to create the inside of your wound um, so just take it up you can take it as high as you want you can make it whatever shape you want um, and and make sure also as you go along you are pulling at the sides because this will really lift it um, in a really good way and will make it look really real um, and you'll be able to see by the end of it the effect that it has um, so make sure that you do that The next step, once you are happy with that, is to go in with whatever foundation you have used or you want to use. I have done my makeup before. I used the MAC Studio Fix 
yeah, Studio Fix um, in NW13 if that helps anyone out. Um, but I'm just applying this with a so we have a big buffing brush um, and I'm just going to make sure that obviously this is blended nicely into my skin so it looks like my skin um, and just that it looks really natural and yeah, that's all I have to say about that one. <laughs> You also may want to take a smaller brush in with your foundation because sometimes the tissue can still look really white. Um, so you might want a smaller brush to go in for finer detail because the bigger brush just tends to like miss out on it. Um, that's something I learned because I practiced a couple times before actually filming this because I've never done it before. Um, that's something that I found. So you might want a smaller brush for finer detail. Then as you go along, keep on pulling at the sides of your wound to make it look open and fleshy skin and grossness. The next step you want to do is take whatever red body paint you're using or if you have a red eyeshadow um, and you just want to fill, completely fill the inside of the wound. Get right in there, um, right underneath where you have lifted it because otherwise you don't want to miss anything because that just won't look good at the end of it. Um, so if you have something that looks like this, you're on the right way. Then I'm just adding a little bit of red just to sort of make it look a little bit bruised and to sort of join it into my skin more. If you have trouble with the latex at the beginning and spreading it out, um, then this is a really good technique because it will blend it into your skin. Then I'm just going to take one of these like really cheap like smudger brushes that everyone seems to like just get um, and I'm just going to blend that out again to make it look even more natural. Taking a black gel eyeliner, this is by the brand Lola, but you can use anything, any black pencil, and an angled brush. I'm going right in and underneath where I've lifted the wound, um, and this is just going to make it look even deeper than it actually is. It's going to add definition, and it's just going to make it look even more gory Then we actually add the blood in the next step. So get right in there. Um, try not to make it too visible, though. Um, because then it'll look fake and again I'm just going in and adding it to the outside of the wound and blending that all out. Next step is the blurred and this is my favourite bit, don't know why I sort of went in the phone there um, but um, yeah this is really good blood like I said before it's quite expensive though but it's amazing it comes with a little stick um, so I'm just going to use that to apply it and you want to apply this all on the inside of your wound first um, I mean you can see how thick it is and then you can really see how the black really helps with this part um, it's really glossy and just looks really good so now I'm just splattering it all completely over um, my wound just to make it really tie into my actual skin and um, so it's not just like an open wound because if you did have an open wound the blood would be everywhere um so that's what i'm doing now just spreading that everywhere making it look disgusting and gory and like gross and i mean you can only get away with it one day out of the year so just go for it so you should have something that looks like this i'm just gonna add a bit more because why not yolo um <laughs> yeah so i want it to sort of drip all the way down my face i'm just going to give it a helping hand so now it has dripped um this blood like i said is really good so what i'm going to do is get a bit of tissue and i want to create a bruise on my forehead so i'm going to use some purple eyeshadow this is just the rimmer one and i'm using it as like a bit of a puff and i'm just gently like tapping and bouncing it into my um, head obviously this is the easiest way to to do it um, with tissue because it doesn't cost you anything um, then I'm just going to add a little bit of black and I'm doing it in sort of like a U shape like a slanted U shape and then you're going to want to go in and blend all of this out just keep on blending until you're happy with it so then I'm going to go back in with my tissue and just again going to blend it in then on top of that I'm taking my red body paint again doing the exact same thing going over the black to add that real bruised effect and then I'm going to take some more of the red body paint straight on a tissue and this is just going to give the blood effect um, but using the same product and now I want to give myself a bloody nose because I thought why not um, so I'm just applying this not in my nostril just in the bottom of my nostril um, and then I'm going to take a cotton bud with my blood and I'm just going to apply this to my temple because I just fancy something going on up there. Like I said, you can only do it once a year, so just go all out. Um, and I really like actually how the bruise has turned out. So then I'm just going to apply a bit of blood to my nose and let that drip down my face. And I still do want it to look quite natural, 
um, so I want that to just sort of naturally drip but I'll give it a helping hand. Then at this point the original wound I did should all be dry and the blood will dry quite quickly because this is really good blood so I'm just going to like go all out here and apply as much as I can just splatter it all over and make it look disgusting and it makes me feel quite sick to look at but I think that's a good thing because that's what I wanted to do um, so just go all out with this bit. And that is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I mean, go and zhuzh your hair up. That's what I'm doing, trying to get into character. Um, I'll give you a snake a little close up um, so you can see what it's like. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. I would really like it if you create it to send me a photo. You can send it on my Instagram. All my social media links are below. Make sure you thumbs this video up, share it, and subscribe if you are new. And I will see you very, very soon for another video. Don't know why I did that. <laughs>